It will make you cry from laughing and then make you cry because it's emotional. So yeah. Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know, my name is Tifa and today we are talking about Kaguya-sama. More specifically, Kaguya-sama, Love is War, The Kiss That Never Ends. So this is actually the Kaguya-sama film that came out recently. It came out in about December, Christmas season, for those in Japan, but worldwide it came out in time for Valentine's Day. So this is kind of a Christmas film and surprisingly a good Christmas film. Now for those who don't know, Kaguya-sama is the story of Kaguya and Shirogane, who are the president and the vice president of their school. Both of them kind of have a crush on each other, but they won't admit it to one another. Instead, they try to coerce the other person into confessing, which creates an adorable love war. Now, this is an incredibly fun and heartfelt series, and the movie is exactly the same way. It is pretty incredible. Now, a slight spoiler for those who haven't seen the most recent season of Kaguya-sama, but this film starts off of the end of the previous season where the two of them actually have their first kiss. The film is about the premise of their first kiss and the emotions that they go through afterwards, whether or not they're boyfriend, girlfriend, if they need to have a conversation about this, what kind of conversation they're gonna have about this, and just kind of the usual uh, emotional turmoil that some teenagers would probably go through after their first kiss. Especially considering that there has been so much leading up to this moment, so it's really quite interesting seeing their inner thoughts about it as well throughout this film. What I do really like about this film is the fact that they don't shy away from what teenagers are thinking um, and just different aspects of the teenage mind. Now a lot of anime series won't talk about certain things uh, because they're trying to be more wholesome but I believe that Kaguya-sama in the series and the film delve delves into everything basically and I kind of mean everything like it's in your face in the first few minutes of the film they discuss not only kind of what might happen after a first kiss but all different kinds of aspects of a relationship and all different kinds of aspects of the anxiety that someone has inside as well and just mental turmoil and issues that they may have in concerns to this. That being said, Kaguya Summer is a really really funny film, it is a great time, and I did have a laughing fit for about the first 10 minutes of the film, so I think that says something about the film. I personally think that it is a really fun and emotional film that really balances the romantic aspects with the dramatic aspects and the comedy and whatnot. It's a really good balance and I'm actually kind of picky about my anime films. And I'm not talking about anime films such as Studio Ghibli or I Want to Eat Your Pancreas or Your Name. Nope, those kind of standalone films, but anime films that come out of an anime series. There are three main things that I like to see in my anime films. The first thing is that the story, the world that we see within this anime film has to adhere to the law or the rules of the anime series itself. Whether this is in Naruto with the ninjutsu and the chakra adhering to the same rules surrounding that, or like in Kaguya-sama adhering to the rules surrounding their personalities, because sometimes these films completely change the personalities of the characters we see in a series. So it was really great to see that Kaguya-sama really falls within the lore of their series. I felt that One Piece Red, a recent anime film, 
really struggled with this. I mean, there's a pretty simple premise around fruits and the powers that you can get from these fruits set out in One Piece, just as a really basic example. And it really just ignores that, which was really odd to see in the One Piece Red film. My second criteria that kind of has to be met is that the plot needs to be really fluid. Now, most people would probably say this about any film. You want to have a fluid storyline that really just just works. It doesn't feel like there's any stops or breaks that are unnecessary. Kaguya Sama is a really great example of this. It is an hour and 30 minutes. It feels like you're just watching a 20 minute episode of the anime because it just, it goes and goes and goes. There are no unnecessary stops, the breaks they have feel purposeful and they feel like they're meant to be there, they're not odd or out of place, and the storyline develops really, really well within this film, which I appreciate a lot. An anime film that I saw not too long ago was actually the slime film, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, Scarlet Bonds. Um, there were like three different points in that film that felt like the end but what the end <laughs> and it kind of felt like three OVA episodes that they just stitched together rather than a full film and I'm very happy that Kaguya Sama didn't fall into that same sort of category it actually did really well at creating a fluid storyline and the third and final thing that kind of needs to be checked off for me and it's a little bit of a, a weird one, but I hope that I can explain this well enough that you guys kind of understand what I'm saying, is that the film needs to slot into the series well, but not disrupt it. Yeah. <laughs> the best example I could give of this is actually Mugen Train. So Demon Slayer Mugen Train is actually a good film. It's very enjoyable and the animation is incredible, but unfortunately it doesn't tick this box because they had to reanimate the film into the anime series, making the film almost pointless. Even though that film adheres to everything else and is really great, there are some major key points that happen within Mugen Train because it is a huge aspect, it's a huge arc of the manga and if you have to go from anime series to the movie to the series again, yeah that's not great. <laughs> Basically a lot of people won't go watch a movie that is part of a series and there lies a huge problem if your film is a major arc of the series. So if they didn't end up redoing this arc for Demon Slayer, you'd get the first season and then you'd go straight into the Entertainment District arc and people would be incredibly confused by certain aspects of this series. So they obviously had to redo the movie because not everyone's gonna see the movie, which creates its own problem. And it's just a really annoying pet peeve and an annoying thing to do. I mean, sure, most of us will watch the film if we know it's canonical and we know that it is a major part of the series, but I think changing media formats like that is incredibly annoying and unnecessary. In comparison to this, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is a amazing film that is canonical, but you can continue to watch the series without having watched the film. The film enhances the series as a whole and fills in a few blanks, but because it is set at a time before the series starts, you can watch the series and then go back and watch the film at any point or before you even start the series if you wanted to. It's just not a necessity to watch it, but it is a film that most people would agree is something you should watch as part of the series. I believe Kaguya-sama does the same here. I think that we will go from the previous season to the next season really well, even if you haven't watched the film. The film gives us so many insightful little thoughts and antics about the two of them and their story together, which is absolutely incredible and I would recommend watching it. But if you didn't get the time to watch it 
or were unable to see this because it didn't play in your region before the new season, that's gonna be okay. It'll be very easy to explain certain aspects of this film within the anime without deterring from the film itself and having to recreate the entire thing and without making the film obsolete. So I think they've done an incredible job at picking the right moment from the manga to showcase as a film to give it a climactic feel and make it just incredible to see in the theatres, but also doesn't tear away from the original series itself. I know it's an odd one, but it's kind of an important one and the main one for me. So Kaguya Summer actually hits all three of these checks for me, and it is a very, very fun movie. I enjoyed it a lot. It is definitely up there with my favourite anime films and probably one of the best films to come out of an anime series. I think Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is my only other one that's up there that I can think of off the top of my head, so those two have been pretty incredible and pretty recent. I also think that it's definitely one of my favourite romantic comedies of recent or maybe of all time. I really just enjoyed every aspect of this film, it was a lot of fun, and I think that even if you haven't seen the series, you'd be able to gain enough context from their introduction into this film that, I mean, hey, why not go watch it? <laughs> if you're a fan of Kaguya Summer though, this is definitely a must watch because just the moments and the way that they're done and the little bits we get to see of some of the side characters as well, it's just it's just a lot of fun and it's emotional, it will make you cry from laughing and then make you cry because it's emotional. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I had to rate the film it would probably be like a 9.5 out of 10. Not really someone that would rate something a 10 out of 10 but it's basically a 10 out of 10 if I'm honest. I, I don't actually have anything to nitpick at in this film which is surprising because I nitpick at a lot of things in films because I'm annoying but this was just a good film. If you guys saw the Kaguya Summer movie let me know down below your thoughts as I would love to just chat more about the film. If you would like to see more anime film or anime series reviews then don't forget to give this one a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more otaku related content, then don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Jane.